Hello and welcome to your weekly dispatch. We're covering Pakistan's national artificial intelligence policy draft, major upsets for India's ruling BJP in Karnatak, the 75th anniversary of the Nakba, and in the midst of these developments, our planet is gearing up to experience its hottest five years. Starting with West Asia, while Israel marked its 75th independence anniversary this year, Palestinians continue to recall the cost of that independence as the Nakba or catastrophe of violent displacement that came with it. 15th May 2023 marked the 75th anniversary of the Nakba, a significant event in Palestinian history characterized by the displacement and loss of their homeland. Nakba Day serves as a commemoration of the ethnic cleansing carried out by Zionist paramilitaries in 1948, during which approximately 750,000 Palestinians were forcibly expelled from their homes in historical Palestine. This solemn occasion is observed through annual protests across the occupied territories. The Nakba occurred on May 15, 1948, when the State of Israel was established, leading to the expulsion of Palestinians and the capture of the 78% of historic Palestine. The remaining 22% was divided into the occupied West Bank and the besieged Gaza Strip. During the first Israel-Arab war between 1947 and 1949, Zionist military forces launched attacks on major Palestinian cities and destroyed around 530 villages. These actions resulted in the loss of countless lives, with an estimated 15,000 Palestinians falling victim to mass atrocities, including numerous massacres. Not only that, but it has also endangered or completely destroyed many cultural traditions that were associated with these villages, amounting to not only physical displacements, but also the destruction of certain aspects of Palestinian culture and identity. So as Israel celebrates its independence, it continues to impose severe restrictions on Palestinian movement, denies access to holy sites, demolishes homes, limits access to water and electricity, and denies them the right to self-determination. Furthermore, Israel's continuous expansion of settlements considered illegal under international law involves taking private Palestinian land without compensation and further fragmenting Palestinian geography. To further cement this independence, Israel maintains segregated road systems, separate legal frameworks, and other discriminatory institutions that subject Palestinians to second-class non-citizenship. These policies have drawn international condemnation and outrage due to their oppressive nature and the resulting human rights abuses. Only last month, the Israeli army killed 111 Palestinians and wounded over 12,000, leading to increased global scrutiny and condemnation, including from devout Jewish communities that condemn Israel's Zionist ambitions. The struggle for justice and the right of Palestinians to reclaim their homeland and enjoy full rights and self-determination remains a central issue in West Asia today. And now for some updates from South Asia. The Ministry of Information Technology and Telecommunication in Pakistan has drafted the National Artificial Intelligence Policy with the aim to embrace AI and foster a responsible and transparent AI ecosystem. The policy aims to create an enabling environment for artificial intelligence by focusing on awareness, skill development, standardization, and ethical use. If you're wondering if in the given circumstances it was appropriate timing for this or not, let me break down the need and justification for this push on artificial intelligence. Pakistan currently ranks 117th out of 172 countries in AI readiness, highlighting the need for a comprehensive policy framework. The policy addresses challenges such as data availability and standardization, proposing digitalization and standardization of government and public organization data for predictive analytics and machine learning. To promote AI innovation, the policy advocates for research and innovation centers in AI, supporting the development, testing, and scaling of AI solutions, designing training programs, and fostering collaborations with other countries to build technical expertise. The policy aims to create awareness, develop human capital, draw investment, ensure ethical practices, and address challenges in Pakistan's AI landscape. While uncertainty seems to be plaguing many aspects of the social and political lives of Pakistanis, one thing is for certain. 
the country isn't taking the race for AI integration and adaptability lightly. Speaking of integration and adaptability, the ruling political party next door in India seems to be losing its grip on both, made evident by the results of the recent polls held in the Karnataka state an election that the country's foreign minister saw fit to sabotage regional relations for during the recent SCO meeting. In a surprising turn of events, the Congress party emerged victorious in the Karnataka Legislative Assembly elections, winning 135 out of 224 seats. They secured 43% of the votes, a 5% increase from the previous election, surpassing the BJP's vote share by 7%. The BJP, which had 104 seats in 2018, could only manage 66 this time, while the Janta Dal secured 19 seats. Political commentators attribute the Congress's success to their united leadership and the BJP's misgovernance and internal conflicts. The BJP's unpopular policies targeting Muslims, such as the ban on hijabs and the scrapping of reservations, contributed to the anti-incumbency wave. However, the election results indicate that the BJP's attempts to stoke Islamophobia, which had proven effective in northern states, had limited impact in Karnataka. Analysts suggest that local issues such as rising prices and corruption play a significant role in BJP's defeat. Corruption allegations against the outgoing government had a detrimental effect on the party's reputation, with voters expressing concerns about these allegations. The Congress effectively used the phrase 40% Sarkar to highlight allegations of bribery within the BJP leadership. Overall, the BJP's attempts to exploit Islamophobia had limited success in Karnataka compared to the northern states. The election result is seen as a boost for the opposition's morale as they plan strategies to challenge Prime Minister Modi in upcoming national elections in April and May 2024. Moving on to a story of a more planetary scale. The United Nations has issued its latest warning stating that the period between 2023 and 2027 is highly likely to be the warmest five-year span ever recorded. The combination of greenhouse gas emission and the El Nino phenomenon is driving temperatures to alarming levels. According to the WMO, there is a two-thirds probability that at least one of the next five years will surpass the more ambitious target outlined in the Paris Agreement, which aims to limit global warming. The Paris Agreement, established in 2015, aimed to keep global warming well below 2 degrees Celsius, above pre-industrial levels, with an aspiration of 1.5 degrees Celsius, if possible. In 2022, the global mean temperature was already 1.15 degrees Celsius above the average recorded between 1850 and the 1900s. The WMO emphasized that there is a 98% likelihood that at least one of these five years, as well as the entire five-year period, will set new records for global warmth. The WMO's forecast indicates a 66% chance that global surface temperatures will exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels for at least one of the years between 2023 and 2027, with a range of 1.1 to 1.8 degrees Celsius projected for each of those five years. A warming El Nino refers to the periodic warming of surface temperatures in the central and eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean. In the coming months, which combined with human-induced climate change will push global temperatures even higher. It has raised concerns about the far-reaching consequences of these rising temperatures on health, food security, water management, and the environment, emphasizing the need for preparedness. The predictions demonstrate a failure to limit global warming thus far, highlighting that efforts are moving in the wrong direction. The Global South is likely to bear the brunt of rising temperatures, even though their contribution to greenhouse gas emissions is negligible. I'm Hajra Asaf Khan, and this was your Weekly Dispatch.